Aloha, Patrick Franti here with Cobble Banker Island Properties. Pleased to present you the September market update. This month, I'm going to just touch briefly on the market stats, and then we'll go into a few um, few tips I have for you um, as we come into our peak selling season for the resort markets. So our medians this month um, just ticked back slightly. Single families down to 745. It's about 10 grand less than last month doesn't really affect the overall annual trend. We're still up about 7% year over year. Condos, right about the same as last month. Um, we're at 518, uh, I think we were at 515 last month. So very stable. Um, one thing that I think is important to note is our pendings for September. Um, we saw, you know, like a 10% uptick in single family pendings over last year and slightly under that for condos. That I think is a good indicator of what sort of peak season we're gonna have this year. I think there is gonna be more interest in the single family realm as condo inventory has gone to almost nothing. We've got like four months of inventory, it's getting quite tight. Um, but yeah, I think it's a good indicator of you know the momentum we're gonna see moving forward. Now on to a few tips that I have for you. So for sellers, Heading into our peak selling season, December through April, that first quarter of 2020, it's going to be huge. I think we're going to see the highest values and sale prices uh, we've seen. We're going to have a lot of records, and I think it may be the last time to achieve those, those peak numbers before things uh, soften a bit as we head into 2020. So with that being said, um, if you are looking for an updated market valuation, please reach out to myself. Uh, my team would love to put that together for you. It's really easy for us. We just need um, you know, your address and any upgrades you've made to the property, and we can put that together uh, for you within 24 hours. So we'd be happy to do that. Also, when you're looking for a realtor to work with, the key in our, you know, most of our resort markets is what kind of exposure are they gonna to bring to you? Um, obviously experience, sales record, um, all that stuff is really important, but what are they gonna actually do for you to get your property in front of people? You know, as we head into these winter months, basically our visitor numbers are gonna virtually double. Now with that, that's a lot of more, you know, a lot more eyes we can put your property in front of and having a robust digital marketing campaign is absolutely crucial for that. Myself and my team um, absolutely excel in that and you know, putting your property on uh, you know front page of Google when people are searching the resort markets um, through pay-per-click campaigns and running various uh, Facebook, Instagram advertising campaigns, just keeping that property out there, keeping keeping it in front of the most likely buyers. So um, definitely check with that when you are considering who to work with to sell your property. Now on to the buy side. Um, you know, with the popularity of investment properties, vacation rentable condos, um, Airbnb, um, I'd love to touch on this because I feel like I have this conversation over and over and over with buyers I'm working with um, focus on these property types. When analyzing these properties, it's crucial to know what your operating costs are. Now, most people go into this and they say, oh, you know, I love this two bedroom condo, um, wherever it may be, you know, beachfront, across the street ocean view, garden view, um, whatever that may be. It's key to know your operating costs. That's gonna really determine what your ROI is and what your property's uh, eventually gonna cap at. Now, typical operating costs for these properties, maintenance fees are a biggie. Here in Hawaii, maintenance fees are typically quite a bit more than what people are used to on the mainland. Um, typically that's because of increased amenities, resort style properties and or um, increased maintenance, whether it be near the ocean, um, increased insurance costs for flood and that sort of stuff. Um, outside of maintenance fees, you've got your management costs. Um, that's a huge one. If you're looking for hands-off management, right now on our market, that's gonna be about a baseline of 25%. Now that 25% is off of your gross rental income, comes right off the top, and with that, basically, you sit back, relax, and collect a check every month. Um, we are starting to see more um, what I would call like a la carte management options where they will perform certain services for you at lower fees, but then you as an owner have to get involved and handle bookings or handle guests or um, you know stuff like that. So that is um, 
a sector we're starting to see um, you know more competition in. But right now, 25% right off the top. With that, you've got your property taxes, biggie. Um, any insurance costs, which are pretty nominal because your HOA dues typically cover the exterior of the building. Then you have, um, you know, any, whether cable internet are included, a lot of the HOAs include those in your fees, but if not, you wanna factor those in, you know, that's easily a couple hundred bucks a month. And your electric costs, that's a biggie. Um, it can be anywhere from 100, 150 bucks a month for a one bedroom condo, up to three, four, 500 a month for a larger, um, you know, more high-end condo, typically based on square footage. Um, you know, so with that, th those are your typical operating costs that you're gonna wanna back out of any rental income numbers that you uh, take a look at when you're evaluating properties. That's how you find your net operating income and determine whether it's a good buy or not. Um, I can definitely go into more detail with you. Um, if you'd like, shoot me an email, text, or give me a call and I can go into that further. But just wanted to touch on that. We have a lot of clients looking at those properties right now um, and figured it'd be helpful. Until next month, um, I'm gonna say aloha. And if you have any questions in the meantime, I'm available uh, via call or text. Hope to hear from you soon. Bye-bye.